fine armful now, Mary, of those 20 pounds you've gained. <laughs> oh, I've gotten too fat, you mean, my dear. I really ought to reduce. Now, now that, my lady, you're just right. Let's uh, have no talk of reducing. That's why you ate so little breakfast this morning? So little? I thought I ate a lot. Mm, I did, not as much as I'd like to see, anyway. Oh, you. You expect everybody to eat the enormous breakfast you do. No one else in the world could without dying of indigestion. Well, I hope I'm not as big a glutton as that sounds, but I've kept my appetite. And I have the digestion of a young man of 20 if oh, I am 60. You certainly have, James. No one could deny that. I wonder why they're staying in the dining room. Kathleen must be waiting to clear the table. Well, it's some secret confab. They don't want us to know anything about, I suppose. Probably cooking up some new scheme to touch the old man. <laughs> ah. There's nothing like the first after breakfast cigar, Mary. Especially if it's a good one. Got a good bargain on these. Got them dead cheap. Because McGuire put me onto them. Oh, I hope he didn't put you on to any new piece of property at the same time. You know his real estate bargains don't work out so well, James. Well, I wouldn't say that now, Mary. After all, he's the one that advised me to buy that place on Chestnut Street, and I made a quick turnover on it for a fine profit. But let's not argue about business this early in the morning. James, it's Edmund that you want to scold for not eating enough. He hardly touched anything except coffee. Of course, it's nothing takes away your appetite like a bad summer cold. It's perfectly natural. There's nothing to worry about. What makes you think I'm worried? Oh, nothing. It's just that in the last few days you seemed a bit high strung. I have? Oh, nonsense, dear. It must be your imagination. Oh, James, you really must not watch me all the time. I mean, it, it makes me self-conscious. If I've watched you, it's only to admire how fat and beautiful you've become. <laughs> I can't tell you the deep happiness it gives me, darling. To see you the way you've been since you've come back to us. Your dear old self again. Keep up the good work, Mary. I will, dear. Oh, thank heavens the fog is gone. I do feel out of sorts this morning. I wasn't able to get my much sleep last night with that awful fog on going all night long. Oh, you were snoring so hard, I could hardly tell which was the foghorn. Ten foghorns couldn't disturb you. You haven't a nerve in you. You've never had. Oh, not since you've always exaggerated about my snoring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's the joke, I wonder? On me, I'll bet. It's always on the old man. Well, you mustn't pick on Jamie all the time. It'll turn out all right in the end. You wait and see. Well, we better get started. He's nearly 34. Oh, good heavens. Are they going to stay in the dining room? Jamie, Edmund! Come into the living room and give Kathleen a chance to clear that table. Yes, Mama. You'd make excuses for him no matter what he did. Shush. I was just teasing your father about his snoring. I'll leave it up to the boys, James. They must have heard you. Well, no, not you, Jamie. You're just as bad as your father. <laughs> Once your head hits the pillow, ten foghorns couldn't wake you up. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that, Jamie? Is it my hair? coming down and it's so difficult for me to put it up now. My eyes are getting so bad and I can never find my glass. Here's all right, Mama. I was only thinking of how well you look. Oh. Just what I've been telling you, Jamie. She's a fat and sassy. There's going to be no holding her. Yes, you certainly look grand, Mama. And I'll back you up about Papa snoring. Gosh, what a racket. Oh, I heard him too. The more I know his trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> and what were you two grinning about like Cheshire cats when you came in? What was the joke? Don't look at me. This is the kid's story. I meant to tell you last night, Papa, and forgot. But yesterday, when I dropped in at the inn, you Oh, you mustn't drink that man. You'll never guess who I ran into there. But Shaughnessy, the tenant on that farm of yours? Oh, that dreadful man. But he is funny. He's not funny if you're the landlord. The wily shanky mick, that one. But he wants me to lower his rent. I let him have the place for next to nothing. Just have someone on it. He never pays that unless I threaten to evict him. He didn't beat about anything, Papa. It seems that he had a fight with that friend of yours, Harker, the Standard Oil millionaire, and won a glorious victory. <laughs> <laughs> well, you remember, the ice pond on Harker's estate right next to the farm. And you know that Sean keeps pigs. Well, it seems there was a break in the fence and that the pigs had snuck through and were wallowing around in the ice pond. Harker's foreman was positive that Sean had broken down the fence on purpose in order to give his pigs a free wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, Harker came down in person to rebuke him. Stood about as much chance with him as I would with Jack Johnson. <laughs> Shaughnessy got a few drinks under his belt, and he was waiting for him down at the gate. He began by shouting that he was no slave Standard Oil could trample upon. He was a king of Ireland if he had rights, and scum was scum, no matter how much money it had stolen from the poor. <laughs> he even accused Harker of having his foreman break down the fence on purpose to entice the pigs in to destroy them. He caught their death of coal. <laughs> Shaughnessy said he was going to hire a lawyer to sue for damages. He wound up by saying that he put up with much on his farm. Ticks, snakes, potato bugs. 
But he was an honest man who drew the line somewhere, and he'd be damned if he'd stand for a standard oil thief trespassing on his property. So, would Hawker kindly remove his feet from the premises where he'd sick his dog on him? And Hawker did! Ha 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 ha! Ah, you can't beat him. Dirty blagger, don't get me in serious trouble yet! I hope you told him I'd be mad as hell. I told him you'd be tickled to death over the ah. glorious Irish victory, and so you are, Papa. Stop me. Not tickled to oh, death. You are simply delighted, no, James. Mary. No, no. Joke, joke. Oh, I told you, honestly, that well, he should have reminded Harker that a standard oil millionaire. He should appreciate the flavor of hog in his ice water at <laughs> an appropriate time. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, nothing oh, funny. Come on, Papa. It's fine. Son, you are to help that blanket get me into a lawsuit. Oh, Papa! And you're worse than he is encouraging him. I bet you wish you were there. For God's sake, Papa, if you're going to start that, I'll leave. You have a fine talent for that, if nothing for else. For God's sake, you'd think you'd be sick to death of hearing yourself going on and on. You mustn't mind Edmund, James. Remember, he isn't well. Summer cold makes anyone irritable. Oh, it's not just a summer cold he's got. The kid's damn sick. Why do you say that? Of course it is. You always imagine things, Jamie. All Jamie meant was that Edmund might have a touch of something else, which makes his cold worse. Dr. Hardy thinks it might be a touch of malarial fever he caught when he was in the tropics. If it's so, quinine will soon cure it. Huh. Dr. Hardy, I wouldn't believe a word he said if he swore in a stack of Bibles. Mary. He'll do anything, anything to keep you coming back to him. Why are you staring, Jamie? Is coming down? Nothing wrong with your hair. The healthier and fatter you get, the vainer you become. You'll soon be spending the whole afternoon primping in front of a mirror. But I really should have new glasses, James. My eyes are getting so bad. Ah, your eyes are beautiful and well you know it. Mm. Oh, you're so silly and right in front of Jamie. Oh, he's on to you. <laughs> he knows all this talk about hair and eyes is only fishing for compliments, eh, Jamie? <laughs> Kid, kid us, Mama. Oh, go along with both of you. But I did truly have beautiful hair once, didn't I, James? The most beautiful in the world. It was a rare shade of reddish brown, and so long it came down below my knees. It wasn't until after Edmund was born that I had a single gray hair. And that made it lovelier than ever. Oh, will you listen to your father, Jamie? And after 35 years of marriage, isn't a great actor for nothing, is he? What's come over you, James? Are you teasing me about pouring coals of fire on your head because you were snoring. <laughs> well, I take it all back. It must have been the farticorn I heard. <laughs> well, I can't stay here even to hear compliments. I'm going to see the cook about dinner in the day's marketing. Oh, that Bridget, she's so lazy. She's always telling me about her relatives so I can't get a word in edgeways and scold her. Well, I might as well get it over with. Oh, James, remember, I don't make Edmund work on the hedge with you this morning. You're a fine lunkhead. Have you no sense? Don't you know the one thing to avoid is saying anything that'll get him more upset over Edmund? All right, have it your way. I think it's the wrong idea to let Mama go on killing her stuff with the summer cold talk. She knows better. Knows? Nobody knows yet. Well, I do. I was with Edmund on Monday when he went to talk to Hardy. Heard him pull that touch of malaria stuff. Stolen. Doesn't know what he thinks anymore. He to phone me today before Edmund goes to see him. Fix of consumption, doesn't he, Papa? Yes. He thinks it might be. Okay. God damn it. This might have never happened if you'd sent him to a real doctor when he first got sick. That's right. <laughs> running down, run down, everybody. Everyone's a fake to you. I already only charges a dollar. That's what makes you think he's a fine doctor. That's enough. There's no excuse now you're not drunk. You think I can't afford one of those fine society doctors who prey on the rich summer people. Can't afford you one of the biggest property owners around here. That doesn't mean I'm rich. It's all mortgages. That's because you buy more properties instead of paying off mortgages. If Edna were a lousy acre of land, this is scoured That's a lie. And your sneers against Dr. Hardy are lies. He doesn't put on frills or drive around in a fancy automobile. And that's what you pay for with these... All oh, right, I'm a fool to, to, to argue with you. You can't change a leopard spots. No, you can't. You've taught me that lesson only too well. I've long since given up any hope that you'll change yours. You dare tell me what I can afford? You don't know the value of a dollar, never will. You've thrown away your weekly salary on whores and whiskey. My salary. Christ. If you weren't my son, there isn't a manager in the business who would give you a part. Your reputation stinks so. And there is, I have to humble myself and beg for you, saying you've turned over a new leaf, although I know it's a lie. I never wanted to be an actor. You forced me onto the you stage. You never looked for any other kind of work to do. You left it up for me to find you a job, and I have no influence except in the theater. Forced you! All you ever wanted to do was loaf in bar rooms and sponge on me for the rest of your life. 
After all the money I've spent on your education, and all you ever did was get fired in disgrace from every college you ever went to. God's sake. Don't drag up that ancient history. It's not ancient history that you have to come home every summer to live on me. I earn my board and lodging around here, working the grounds. It saves you from hiring a man. You have to be driven to do even that. I wouldn't give a goddamn if there's some sign of gratitude. The only thanks is to have you sneer at me for a dirty old miser. Sneer at my profession, sneer at everyone but yourself. That's not true, Papa. You don't hear me talking to myself, that's all. Ingratitude, the vilest weed that grows. See that line coming? How many thousand times? All right, Papa, I'm a bum. Anything you like, so long as it stops this argument. If you get ambition in your head instead of folly, you're young yet, you can still make your mark. You had the talent to become a fine actor, you have it still. You're my son. I'm interested in the subject. Neither are you. Gonna starve on us anyway. All right, what is he going to phone you about, Edmund? Oh, around lunchtime. And what could the finest specialist in America do for Edmund? After he's deliberately ruined his life by the mad life he's led ever since he was fired from college, he began dissipating and playing the Broadway sport to imitate you. You've always been a bundle of nerves, like his mother. I warned him for years his body couldn't take it, but he wouldn't heed me. Now it's too late. Too, what do you mean, too late? You talk as if you... Oh. It's an Irish peasant idea. Consumption is fatal. Well, it might be. If you live on a hovel, not a bog. But over here with modern treatment, we can... Don't I know that? And what are you gabbing about anyway? And keep your dirty tongue off Ireland! You're talking about peasants and bogs and hovels. The less you say about Edmund's condition, the better for your conscience. It's more your fault than anybody's. It's a lie, Papa. I won't stand for that. It's the truth. Lie. He admired you as a hero growing up, pumping him full of what you considered worldly wisdom when he was way too young. You wanted him to believe that every man was a knave with his soul for sale, and every woman who wasn't a whore was a fool. All right, I did put Edmund wise to things. Uh, All I did was make a pal of him. Be absolutely frank. So he learned from my mistakes. I can't be good at this because. Well, oh, sorry. A rotten accusation, Papa. It's a rotten accusation. You know how much the kid means to me. I'd do anything for him. Well, I know you thought it was for the best, Jamie. Ah, oh, besides, it's damn rot. It's quiet. This tricks people into thinking they can do what they want with him. What had I to do with all the crazy stunts he's pulled over the last year, traveling all over the map as a sailor and all that stuff? <laughs> you can't imagine me getting fun out of sitting on a beach in South America, living in filthy dives, drinking rot gut, can you? <laughs> no thanks, I'll stick to Broadway. Rooms with baths and bars that serve bonded bourbon. You and Broadway made you what you are. At least Edmund's had the guts to go off on his own and not come whining back to me every time he goes broke. He's always come home broke, finally, hasn't he? Look what is going away got him. Look at him. It's just a lousy thing to say. I didn't mean that. Well, he's doing well on the newspaper. I thought he found the work he wanted to do at last. Yeah, the hit town rack. Whatever bull they hand you. Tell me he's a pretty bum reporter. If you weren't your son, it... It's not true. They're glad to have him. It's the special stuff that gets him by. Some of the poems and parodies are written pretty damn good. Well, you made a start. It's damnable Edmund should be sick at this time and couldn't come at a worse time for him. Or for your mother. Damnable she should have this to worry her. She's been so well in the two months since she came home to us. She's been so strong and sure of herself. She had control of her nerves, at least she did until Edmund got sick. Now you can feel her growing tense and frightened inside. I wish to God we could keep the truth from her, but we can't if he has to be sent to a sanatorium. We have to help her, Jamie, in every way we can. Of course, Papa. Outside of nerves, she seems perfectly all right this morning. Never better. Full of fun and mischief. Seems. Why do you say seems? Why shouldn't she be all right? What the hell do you mean? Oh, for God's sake, don't start jumping down my throat. Thought I'd be one subject who can talk over frankly without an argument. Last night. Can't forget the past. And that's a hell of it. She watches us watching her. About three o'clock, I woke up. 
heard Mama moving around in the spare room. Then she went to the bathroom. I pretended to be asleep. She stopped in the hall. I filled this the music to make sure I was. Things are being in the spare room that scared me. Can't help but think whenever she starts sleeping alone in there, it's always been a sign. No, no, well, no, no, not this time. Where else could she go to get away from my snoring? <laughs> oh, it would be like a curse. She can't escape. Worry over Edmund. It was in her long illness after being in the world. She didn't have anything to do with it. First... I'm not blaming her. Are you blaming Edmund for being born? Oh, don't be such a damn fool. Nobody's to blame. That bastard of a doctor, huh? From what Mama tells me, he was another cheap quack like Hardy. You liar. You wouldn't pay So that's what you're trade. getting at. So that's what this is all about. My fault, is it? <laughs> you evil-minded looper! Shh. We're going to get to work on the front hedge. We better get started. Did I actually hear you suggest working on the front hedge, Jim? Well, wonders will never cease. You must want pocket money badly. Right. And what were you two arguing about? Same old stuff. Well, I thought I heard your father talking about a doctor and accusing you of being evil-minded. Yeah, I was just seeing again how hard he is in my idea of the world's greatest physician. Oh, no. He isn't fine either. Well, that Bridget, I, I couldn't get away from her. She was telling me about her second cousin on the police force in St. Louis, and, well, if you're going to go out in the front hedge, why don't you go, Jamie? I mean, uh, take, take advantage of the sunshine before the fog comes down. Uh, I know it will. Or should I say the rheumatism in my hands knows? They are a better weather prophet than you are, James. Oh, how ugly they are. Who would ever once believe that they were so beautiful? Oh, none of that foolishness now, Mary. They're the loveliest hands in the world. Come along, Janie. Your mother is right to scold us. We're all so proud of you, Mama. I'm so darn happy. But you must be careful. You mustn't worry so much about him. He'll be all right. Of course he'll be all right. And I don't know what you mean, wanting me to be careful. All right, Mama. I'm sorry I spoke. they went out. I didn't want to mix up in their argument. I feel too rotten, Mama. Oh, you're growing much too thin. Come and sit down, dear. Make yourself comfortable. You know, all you need is your mother to nurse you now. Big as you are, you're still the baby of the family to me, you know. Never mind that. Just take care of yourself. That's all that matters. Oh, but I am, dear. Good heavens, haven't you seen how fat I've grown? I have to let all my dresses out. <laughs> They go the Chatfields in their new car. Oh God! Jamie started working on the on the hedge. How oh, he hates having everybody pass by see him. Oh, that is a beautiful car. Not like our secondhand packet. Poor Jamie. He's bent almost underneath the hedge so that they won't see him. <laughs> and of course, there's your father bowing to them as if he were taking a curtain call in that filthy old suit I've tried to make him throw away. Well, he ought to have more pride than to make such a show of himself. He's right not to care what anyone thinks. Jamie's a fool to care about the Chatfields. Outside of this Hickberg, who's heard of them anyway? No one. You're quite right. they frogs in a small puddle. Exactly. But yet, the Chatfields are people like them. They stand for something. I mean, they have decent, presentable homes that they don't have to be ashamed of. They, they have friends. They're not cut off from everyone. I don't want anything to do with them or anybody in this town. I've always hated this town and everybody in it. But... But your father, he, he always liked it here and insisted on building this house. We've had to spend every summer since. It's better than spending the summer in a hotel in New York, isn't it? I mean, it's the only home we've had. Oh, I've never felt it was a home. Everything was done in such a cheap way. It's just as well that we don't have people coming into here. I'd be so ashamed to have them step through the door. Oh, your father likes to do his hobnob with his male friends at the bar or at the club. And, and you and Jamie, you're the same way. Of course, it's, you're not to blame. You, you've never had a chance to meet decent... Forget it, Mama. But who cares? Jamie and I would have been bored stiff anyway. As for the old man, what's the use talking? You can't change him. Don't call your father the old man. You really should show more respect. And I... 
I know it's useless to talk now. It's just that sometimes I, I feel so lonely. Anyways, you've got to be fair, Mama. <laughs> it may have been all his fault in the beginning, but you know he couldn't have had anyone here anyway after. Well, what I meant to say, Mama, was that, well, you wouldn't have wanted anyone here. That's, that's it. What meant? Don't. I can't bear having you remind me. Oh, I hate reminding you like that, but well, it's just been so wonderful having you home like this, Mama. And, and it'd be just, just awful. Tell me the truth. Why, why do you act so suspicious all of a sudden? I'm not. It, 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 yes, you are. I can feel it. Your father and Jamie, too, particularly Jamie. Oh, that's crazy. We do trust you, Mama. Oh, if there was only some woman friend that I could go and talk with for a while, spend an afternoon. But of course, there isn't. But, Mama, please, you're working yourself up over nothing. Well, you have your friends. Your father has his, but, but I'm alone. I'm always alone. Come oh, now. You know that's a fib. One of us always stays here to keep you company, or goes with you in the automobile when you take a drive. Yes, because <coughs> you're afraid to trust me alone. Oh, Edwin, I insist you tell me why you act so differently this morning. Why you felt you had to remind me. Stupid. I wasn't asleep when you came into my room last night. You went into the spare room for the rest of the night. Well, your father's snoring was driving me crazy. Good heavens, don't I often use a spare bedroom as my bedroom? So, you were pretending to be asleep in order to spy on me? No, Mom, I, I wasn't feeling well last night, and I, and I know it would upset you if you found out that I was feverish. And I suppose your father and Jamie, too, were pretending? Mama, please, stop it, oh, Edmund, stop I it! I can't bear it when even you! It would serve all of you right if it were true! Mama, please, don't say that! That's the way you start talking with... Stop suspecting me, please, dear. You hurt me. I couldn't sleep last night because I was so worried about you. That's foolishness. You know it's only a summer cold. But, Mama, please, you must promise me, if it does turn out to be something worse, that you won't wear yourself sick over it. That you'll just keep taking care of yourself. Don't be silly, dear. Of course I promise you. I, I, I give you my sacred word of honor. But I suppose you remember I've often given my word of honor. No. Oh, I don't blame you. How can any one of us help it? That's what makes it so difficult. It's hard to forget. Stop it, please. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I didn't mean to be so gloomy. Forgive me. Oh, let me let me feel your head. Why, it's nice and cool. You haven't any fever now. Oh, forget it, forget it. I'm just worried about you, Mama. Oh, well, I, I, I'm all right, dear. Except I, I, I do feel a little nervous after having such a bad night. I think the best thing for me to do is to go upstairs and lie down and, until lunchtime. What will you do, read here? Well, you really should go out and get some sunshine and fresh air, but, but remember, dear, wear a hat. You don't want to get sunstroke. Or are you afraid to trust me alone? No. Can't you stop talking? I think you ought to take a nap. I think I'll go out and help Jamie bear up. You know how I love to lie in the shade and watch him work. Lunchtime soon. Will I call your father, Mr. Jamie, or will you? You do it. It's a wonder your father doesn't look at his watch once in a while. He's a devil for making the meals late. And then Bridget curses me as if I was to blame. Still, he's a grand, handsome man. He is old. <laughs> You'll never see the day you're as good looking, nor Mr. Jamie either. <laughs> I'll wager Mr. Jamie wouldn't miss the time to stop work and have his drop of whiskey if he watched to his name. <laughs> 
All right, you win on that one. And here's another I'd win, that you're making me call them so you can sneak a drink before they come. I hadn't thought of that. Oh, no, not you. But it wouldn't melt in your mouth, I suppose. <laughs> but now that you suggest it, oh, I might. I never suggest a man or a woman take a drink, Mr. Inman. Sure, didn't it kill an uncle of mine in the old country? Still, a drop now and then is no harm. If you're in low spirits, sir, have a bad cold. <laughs> Thanks for handing me a good excuse. <laughs> Better call my mother. What for? She's always on time without any calling. God bless her, she has some consideration for the help. She's been napping upstairs. She wasn't asleep when I finished my work upstairs a while back. She was lying down in the spare room, eyes wide open. She had a terrible headache, she said. You better just call my father then. <sighs> no wonder my feet kill me each night. I won't go out in this heat and get sunstroke. I'll call from the porch. Mr. Jamie! Oh, here you are. That's just almost ready. Oh! Oh! It's Mr. Tyrone! It's time! Sneaking one. I kid? No, I was just kind of a bluff. You're a rottener actor than I am. Right, I grabbed him while the going was good. I wasn't sure it was you coming. I made the old man look at his watch. I was halfway up the walk when I heard Kathleen burst into song. It's our wild Irish lark. <laughs> Gotta be a train out, so it drove me to drink. Better grab him when you've got the chance. I was thinking of that little thing. The old man wasn't down talking to Captain Turner. Yes, still at it. Not a cover up for the old eagle eye. He memorizes the level of the bottle after every drink. Oh, I know. There. That is it. Hope the old man doesn't forget much. Listen to Tim Salt talk. That's what I hate about working down in front. Puts on a knife for every damn fool who comes along. Hungry. I'm luck to be hungry. The way I feel, I don't care if I ever eat again. Listen, kid, you know me, I've never lectured you. Hardy was right when he told you to cut out I the know, right and I'm going on the wagon after he hands me the bad news this afternoon. Well, you're right to have your mind prepared for the bad news. It won't be such a jolt, Edmund. I'm not. I know how sick I am. I know the fever and chills I get at night are no damn joke. It must be that malaria come back on me. Where's Mama? She's upstairs. <clears throat> When did she go up? About the time I came down to the head. She's been napping. She's been alone upstairs all morning, huh? You haven't seen her? No, I've been here reading. She's sleeping. She's coming down to lunch? Of course. No, of course about it. She might not want any lunch, or she might start having most of her meals alone upstairs. That's happened before, hasn't You it? cut it out, Jamie. Can't you think of anything but a mom? Well, why did you leave her alone so long? Why didn't you stick around? Because she accused me. And you and Papa were spying on her all the time and not trusting her. She made me feel so ashamed. God, I know how rotten it must be for her. <clears throat> if she promised on her sacred word of oh, honor that she would die. I know you think I'm a cynical bastard. But remember, I've seen a lot more of this game than you'll ever know. I know the game backward and forward. Papa and I were wise ten years or more before we had to tell you. And now you tell me she's got you to leave her alone upstairs. She's into crazy! Don't start a battle with me, kid. <laughs> 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 me too. Edmund, <laughs> you mustn't cough like that. You don't want a sore throat on top of your cold, do you? Oh, here I am always picking on you, telling you don't do this and don't do that. Forgive me, dear. It's just that I want to take care of you. Come and sit down. Never mind me, Mama. How do you feel? Are you resting? Oh, yes. Ever so much better. I've been lying down ever since you went out. And I, I feel less nervous now. Oh, how down in the uh, mouth you look, Jamie. What's the matter now? Nothing. Oh, you've been working out in the front hedge. That's why you're sinking. If you want to fix them, Mama. Well, that's the effect it always has, isn't it? And what a big baby he is, T. Edmund. Certainly a fool to care what anyone thinks. Yes, the only way is to make yourself not care. Uh, where's Kathleen? I, I thought I heard... Oh. Calling uh, your He's father. gabbing with old Captain Turner, Jamie says. He'll be late, as usual. Oh, I've told t Kathleen time and time again to go wherever he is to call him. The idea of screaming as if this were a cheap boy. Oh, she's house. down there now interrupting the famous beautiful voice. She ought to show more respect. It's you who should show more respect. Stop smearing at your father. I won't have it. You know, he worked his way up in his profession from ignorance and poverty. Everyone else admires him, and you should be the last one to sneer. You, after all, have never had to work hard in your life. Remember, 
Jamie, your father's getting old. And you should show more consideration. I ought to. Well, dry up, Jamie. And, Mom, why are you jumping on Jamie all of a sudden? Because he's always sneering at someone. I was trying to find the worst weakness. Well, I suppose he can't help what life has done to him. None of us can help the things that life has done. They're done before you realize it. Once they're done, they make you do other things until at last everything that comes between you and what you'd like to be. And then you've lost your true self forever. Oh, God. I'm hungry. Wish the old man would get a move on. It's a rotten trip the way he keeps the meals waiting. Beast because they're spoiled. Yes, it is very trying, isn't it, Jamie? You don't have to keep house with some servants who don't care because they know it isn't a permanent position. And of course, your father won't pay the wages that the best summer help ask. So every year I have lazy, stupid greenhorns to deal with. And, and then, of course, we return to second-rate hotels. <laughs> your father, he doesn't understand a home. He doesn't feel at home in it, yet he loves a shabby place. He loves it here. What makes you ramble on like that? Oh, I don't know, dear. Nothing in particular. I know it is quite foolish, isn't it? Lunch is ready, ma'am. I went down to Mr. Tyrone like you ordered, and he said he'd come right away. But he kept on talking to that man, telling him at the time... Yes, Kathleen. Um, but please, tell Bridget that she'll have to wait a few more moments until Mr. Tyrone comes in. Yes, ma'am. Damn it, why don't you just go ahead without him? He told you to. Oh, Jamie, you really don't know your father. You, that would really hurt him. I'll make him get a move on. Hey, Papa, come on. You can't wait all day. Why are you looking at me like that? What is it? You know. I don't know. No? Do you think you can fool me? Do you think I'm blind? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> Take a look at your eyes in the mirror, Mama. I got Papa moving. He'll be in in a minute. Mama? What's wrong? Your brother to be ashamed of himself. He's been insinuating I don't know what. God damn you, you dirty bastard! Ed, Ed, Jamie! Jamie, it's wrong to blame your brother. He can't help being what he is. No more than you or I can, or your father. He's a liar. It's a lie, isn't it, Mama? What is a lie? Now you're talking in riddles like Jamie. Oh, Edmund, don't. Here comes your father. He's coming up the steps. I'm going to go tell Bridget. Well, well what? You're a liar. Oh, here comes Papa. Let's hope he loosens up with the old bottle. <laughs> well, sorry I'm right. Captain Turner stopped to talk, and once he starts gabbing, can't get away from him. You mean once he starts listening? Don't worry, the level of the bottle hasn't changed any. I wasn't noticing that. <laughs> Not that it matter with you around. I'm on, I'm on your... Did I hear someone say, let's all have a drink? Well, Jamie's welcome after this hard morning's work, but I won't invite you, Dr. Hardy. I'll tell with Dr. Hardy. One drink isn't going to kill me. Besides, Papa, I feel all in. Well, come along then. Before a meal, and I've always said that good whiskey, taken in moderation, as an appetizer, is the best of tonics. I said in moderation, be a waste of breath mentioning moderation to you. Well, here's health and happiness. What's the matter here? There's gloom in the air you could cut with a knife. You got the drink you wanted, didn't you? You won't be singing this song soon yourself. Shut up, you! Well, isn't lunch ready? I'm hungry as a hunter. Where's your mother? Here I am. I've had to calm down Bridget. She's in such a tantrum over your being late again, and I don't blame her. If your lunch is dried up from waiting in the oven, she said it served you right. Oh, I'm so sick and tired of pretending that this is a home. You should have remained a bachelor, James, and lived in second-rate hotels and entertain your friends in bar rooms. Then nothing would have ever happened. Well, Mom, please be quiet. Why don't we all go into lunch, all right? Yes, it, it isn't considerate of me to bring up the past. I, I'm sorry, dear. Oh, I do hope you have an appetite. You really should eat more. Please. Why, why is that glass there? Did you take a drink? Well, Mama... I... Don't you know that it's the worst thing? You are to blame, James. How could you have allowed this? Do you want to kill him? Don't you remember my father? He wouldn't stop after he was stricken. And he felt like you, the doctors, were fools. And that whiskey was the best tonic. Oh. Why? 
person at all. I'm sorry, James. Please, please forgive me. I, I didn't mean to scold you. I, I suppose one, one small drink won't hurt, Edmund. I, it might build up your appetite. Oh, hmm? God's sake. See, come on, let's put on the feedback. Yes, lad, you go on in. I went upstairs and took a nap this morning, and I dozed off, and it was, it was wonderful, but I thought I fixed it when I woke up, and of course I couldn't find my glasses, and James, please stop staring. I, one would think that you were accusing me. Oh, James, you don't understand. I understand I've been a goddamn fool to believe in you. All, all I have felt is spying and distrust and suspicion. And why are you having another drink before lunch? You never have more than one. Oh, I know. You'll be drunk tonight, won't you, Will? It won't be the first time. Oh, the thousands, will it? Oh, James, I'm so afraid. I'm so afraid Edmund's going to... I'm tired of hearing your excuses, Mary. Excuses? Why, you can't believe that of me, James. You mustn't believe that. Shall we not go into lunch? I, I, I'm not very hungry, but I suppose you are. Oh, James. James. Oh, I tried. I tried. Please believe me. Of course you did, Mary. Why couldn't you have had the strength to keep on? can be now, but it was once before you. Before I what? Oh, no, no, no. Whatever you mean, James, that's not true. This has never been a home. In a real home, one is never lonely. You forget that I know from experience what a real home is like. I left her to marry you, my father's. Oh, Edmund. Oh, Edmund. Edmund. You should have eaten more at lunchtime. It's all right for me not to eat because I've been getting so fat, but, but you must eat. Promise me you will, dear, for my sake. Yes, Mama. Oh, that's a good boy. I'll answer. Uh, McGuire said he'd call. McGuire. He must have another piece of property Hello. on his list that no one would buy but your father. Hello, Doctor. <laughs> I've never understood it. He's always been able to buy this property, yes, but see. never to give me a real home. <laughs> Well, he'll explain all about it when he comes in this afternoon. We'll get it for that fail. Yes, and I'll drop in before that and have a chat with you. Yes, goodbye, Doctor. Well, that didn't sound like glad tidings. It was Dr. Hardy. He wants you to be sure to see him at 4 o'clock this afternoon. What did he say? Not that I give a damn now. Well, we all know why you like him, James. Because he's cheap. Oh. Mary. I know all about Dr. Hardy. When you're in agony and have to save, he sits you in the chair and he holds your hand and delivers sermons on willpower. He makes you beg and plead. I hate doctors. They'll do anything, anything to keep you coming back to them. They'll sell their souls, and what's worse, they'll sell mine until one day I've had my soul. Oh, no, will you hell? please be quiet? Mary, it's not the time. Why? Of course, Taylor. It's, it's useless for me to be angry now. I'm sorry. I, I think I'm going to go upstairs and fix my hair, if you'll excuse me. I, that is, if I can find my glasses. Mary? Yes, dear, what is it? Nothing. You're welcome to come upstairs and watch me, if you're so suspicious. As if that would do any good, you'd only postpone it. This isn't a prison. No, I know you can't help feeling that it's a home. I'm sorry, dear, I didn't mean to be so bitter. Another shot in the arm. Cut out that kind of talk. Hold your rotten tongue in your Broadway lover's lingo. 
Have you no pity or decency? You should be kicked out in the gutter! But if I did, you know damn well who'd weep and plead for you! Christ, don't I know that? No pity. I understand what a hard game to beat she's up against, which is more than you ever have. I was merely putting bluntly what we already know. I have to live with again. Cures are no damn thing, except for a while. The truth is, there are no cures. We are stops to hope. They never come back. They never come back. Everything's in the bag. It's all a frame-up. We're all just suckers and fall guys, and we can't hope to beat the game. Christ, if I felt the way you do. I thought you did. Your poetry isn't very cheery. That stuff you read. <laughs> Claim to admire. And that pet of yours with the unpronounceable name for example. Nietzsche, what do you know about it? You have it. What do you have Shut up! Both of you! There's little to choose between the philosophy you learn from your Broadway lovers and the one Edmund got from his books. <laughs> They're both rotten to the core. You both flouted the faith you were born and brought up in. The one true faith of the Catholic Church. And your denial has brought you nothing but self-destruction. We don't pretend any way, Papa. I don't notice you've worn any holes in the knees of your pants going to mass. <laughs> I may be a bad Catholic in the observance, God forgive me. But I believe, and you're a liar. Every morning and every night of my life, I get down on my knees and pray. Did you pray for Mama? Yes, I did. I prayed for her these many years. <laughs> then Nietzsche must be right. God is dead. Of the pity for man hath God died. Your mother had only prayed to. She hasn't denied her faith, but she's forgotten it. And now there's no strength of spirit left to help her fight her curse. Only I wish she hadn't led me to hope this time. By God, I never will again. That's a rotten thing to say, Papa. Well, I will. I'll hope for Mama. She's only just started. She can still stop. I'm going to talk to you her. You can't talk to her. She'll listen, but she won't listen. She'll be here, but she won't be here. You know the way she gets. Upstairs to get dressed. What did Hardy say about the kid? <coughs> That's what she thought. She's got consumption. Poor kid. We'll have to go to a sanatorium. Yes, and the sooner the better, Dr. Hardy says, for him and everyone around him. Uh, he says that in six months to a year, if he obeys orders, Cured. Now, for God's sake, send him to a good place, not some cheap dump. I'll send him whatever Hardy thinks best. I'm no millionaire that can fling money around. Why not tell Hardy the truth? Oh, because you'll know. You, you'll, you'll want to send him to a cheap dump. Because I know it isn't the truth. Especially after he hears you've seen McGuire. <laughs> Let that flannel off Gilbert Merchant sting you with another piece of bunk property. Keep your nose out of my business. This is Edmund's business. Uh, what I'm afraid of is that your Irish peasant idea. You won't spend any more than you can help. Why? I have every hope Edmund will be cured. And keep your dirty tongue off Ireland! You gotta find one to sneer with a map of it all over your face. Not after I wash my face. I, that's all I have to say. The rest is up to you. I better go uptown with Edmund. The bad news coming on top of what's happening with Mama making him hard. Yes, go along with him, Jamie. Try to keep up his spirits if you can. If you can without making it an excuse to get drunk. And what would I use for money? Last I heard they were selling booze, not giving it away. I'll get dressed. Jamie, you, you haven't seen my glasses, have you? You haven't seen them, have you, James? No, Mary. What's the matter with Jamie? You really shouldn't treat him with such contempt all the time, James. It's, it's not his fault. Well, you're not a very good weather prophet, James. See how hazy it's getting and how this evening's for sure. Yes, we're in for another night of fog. Well, I won't mind it tonight. No, I don't imagine you will, Mary. I don't see Jamie going down by the hedge. Where did he go? He just went upstairs to change his clothes to go with the doctor with Edmund. I'm going to go get changed, too. No. I'm going to miss my appointment. No, don't, don't, don't leave yet, dear. I, I don't want to be alone. There's, there's something that I wanted to say to you. What is it? I've forgotten. Well, I'm glad that Jamie's going uptown. You didn't give him any money, I hope. I did not. Because you know what he'll always spend it on. And, and he, no, 
always manages to drive you into a rage, especially when you're going to be drunk too. I will not. I never get drunk. Well, perhaps a stranger can't tell, but after 35 years... <laughs> I've never missed a performance in my life. That's the proof. And if I should get drunk, it's not you who should blame me. No man ever had a better reason. Reason? What reason? Oh, going upstairs to get dressed. No, you'll go at least wait until one of the boys comes down, James. I mean, you'll all be leaving me so soon. It's you who are leaving us, Mary. Oh, what a silly thing to say. How could I leave? Where would I go? There's nowhere I could go. I have no friends. It's your own fault. Shirley, there's one thing you could do this afternoon that would be good for you. Mm. Take a drive in the automobile. Get some sun and fresh air. I bought it for you. You know I don't like the damn things. I'd rather walk or take a trolley anywhere. I was waiting for you when you got back from the sanatorium. You used to ride in it every day. I paid a lot of money I couldn't afford. With that chauffeur, I have to room and lodge and pay wages whether he drives you anywhere or not. Waste! Same damn waste that'll land me in the poorhouse of my old age. Yes, it was a waste of money, James. You shouldn't have bought the second-hand automobile, but you were swindled again, as you always are, because you insist on buying second-hand bargains and everything. I didn't mean to offend you, dear. I was grateful and touched when, when you bought the automobile. I, I know it proved how much you loved me in your way, but you really can't believe Mary. that it would do me any good. Mary, Mary. For the love of God, for my sake and the boy's sake and your own, won't you stop now? I, James, please, stop what? Oh. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, James, we've loved each other. Let's not try to understand what cannot be understood or help the things that cannot be helped, the things that life has done to us. We, cannot excuse or explain. You won't even try? Try to go for a drive no. this afternoon? Why, of course, dear, if that's what you wish. But I, I feel lonelier than if I stayed here. Well, if there was only some woman friend that I could go and talk and laugh and gossip for a while, then of course there isn't. Convent, I, I had so many friends. But naturally, after I married an actor, they all gave me the cold shoulder. and. And then there was that scandal of that woman, mistress, suing you. And after that, all my friends either pitied me or cut me dead. I hated the ones that cut me dead much less than the pity. Mary, can't you stop raking up what's long forgotten? Well, now that I think of it, I, I do have to go uptown. I, I need something at the drugstore. Oh, leave it you to have some of the stuff hidden and prescriptions for more. Well, I hope you lay in a good stock ahead. So we don't have another night like the one where you screamed for it and ran out in your nightdress half crazy to try to throw yourself off the dock. I have to get tooth powder and toilet soap and cold cream. Oh, James, don't you humiliate me. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh. Forgive me, Mary. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Never mind. Nothing like that ever happened. You, you must have dreamt it. I was so healthy before I met Miss Vaughan. I remember going with you on tour year after year and week after week of one night stands, staying in dirty hotel rooms and eating bad food, burying children in dirty hotel rooms. I still kept healthy. But after I met Miss Vaughan, I, I was so sick. And then there was that cheap quack of a hotel doctor. All he knew was that I was in pain. All he knew was how to stop it. Mary, can't you forget the past? Why? How can I? The past is the present, isn't it? And it's the future, too. We all try to lie out of it, but life won't let us. Oh, I blame myself for you, Jean Sterling. If I hadn't have left him with my mother to go with you on the road, then Jamie would have never been allowed when he still had measles to go into the baby's room. Oh, I know he did it on purpose. He was always jealous of that baby. He hated him. 
Oh, I know he was only seven, but he wasn't stupid. He had been warned that it might kill the baby. I've never been able to forgive him for that. Are you back with Eugene again? Can't you let a dead baby rest in peace? But I blame myself. I knew by leaving Eugene that I should have never born another baby and that God would punish me. I was not worthy. Harry, be careful with your talk. I'm not sure over here you, he might think you never wanted him. That's a lie. Of course I wanted him. More than anything in the world. It's just that I meant for his sake. He's never been happy. He never will be. Of course, it's silly to talk about such dreadful things. I mean, everyone has colds and gets over them. Here comes Edmund. You've got to try to be yourself, at least while he's here. At least you can do for him. Well, you look spick and span. I'm on my way upstairs to get dressed. Wait a minute, Papa. I hate to bring up disagreeable topics, but it's a matter of car fare and broke. You'll always be broke until you learn the value. Oh, but you've been learning, lad. You worked hard before you took ill. You've done splendidly. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Oh, sharper than a serpent's tooth it, it is. It is to have a thankless child. I know. Give me a chance, Papa. But I'm not speechless. This isn't a dollar. It's a ten spot. Well, put it in your pocket. You might run into some of your friends uptown and you can't hold up your end and be sociable with nothing in your trousers. Gosh, you mean it? Well, thank you, Papa. Wait a minute. Why are you being so nice all... Did Doc Hardy say I was going to die? <laughs> I'm sorry, that, that was a rotten thing to say, Papa. I didn't mean that. I'm grateful, honest. Thank you, Papa. You're Thank welcome, you. Man. I won't have it! Edmund, don't! Saying you're going to die. It's all those books you read, nothing but sadness and death. You're, you're not really sick at all. Mary, hold your tongue. Oh, James, it's absurd of Edmund to be so gloomy and make such a great to-do about nothing. Oh, never mind, dear. I'm on to you. <laughs> All you want to do is to be petted and spoiled. Well, don't take it so far, dear. Don't say such horrible things because, because you've got me so frightened. Don't, Mama. I better shake a leg. Oh, Edmund, sit down. You, you must learn to husband your strength. There's something I must ask you. You've only just started. You can still stop. You have the willpower. Well, I'll help you. I'll do anything. Won't you, Mama? Please, dear. Let's not talk about things you don't understand. Anyway, I, I don't know what you're referring to. But I do know one thing, that ever since I've come back from the sanatorium, you, you've begun to be ill, and all I've had to do is take care of you. Oh, dear. Please don't believe that I've made you an excuse. What else can I believe? Nothing. I'm not blaming you. I've become such a liar. I've had to lie, especially to myself. I, I don't know anything about it except that one day, a long time ago, I now that I can no longer call my soul my own. Someday I will find it again. And when the Blessed Virgin Mary forgives me and I have found the faith that I've lost in her love. And with her help it will be so easy. I'll find myself screaming in agony and at the same time laughing because I will be so sure of myself. I forgot now. I, I am going uptown. I have to get something at the drugstore, and I, I don't suppose you'd want to go there with me. You'd be so ashamed. Say that, Mama, please. Well, I, you're going to divide that money with Jamie, aren't you? Well, I know what he'll do with his share, but... Oh, Edmund, please don't.
She said he was an old idiot. Oh my god, a beat dog. Oh, this Jamie, huh? Your father. Well, hold on, Edmund. If, if you're going to be home for dinner, try not to be late. Goodbye, Mary. Bye, Mama. to yourself again. You wanted them to go. Their contempt of disgust for you are very pleasant company. You wanted to be rid of them. Then why, Mother of God, am I so lonely? <laughs>